and we're going on with these wonderful collection of stories about Master Tom Dorrance from this lovely book, More Than a Horseman. And today's story is from Carol Friend. I feel particularly fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with Tom and to have received the benefit of his unique insight into working with horses. I always enjoyed watching Tom work with horses and people. Whenever I could get away for a day or two, I would take a horse up to Gustine and ride with Tom. There was always more to learn than I could take in, but with each visit, the pieces started to come together and I was able to understand more and apply more of what I learned. Tom had a unique way of working with horses in order to help them feel relaxed and safe and made the lessons interesting and challenging for the horse as well as the rider. He treated each horse as an individual and gave them just what they needed by way of explanation and encouragement at just the right time and in just the right amount. He knew how much time they needed in between projects to think and process what they had learned. I learned many valuable lessons from Tom, among them how much to ask, when to ask, when to wait and when to move on to something else. All these points were so valuable and he also helped me to see how not to create an issue over something that would probably clear up with time and was certainly not worth damaging my rapport with the horse. I valued each opportunity I had to visit with Tom. On one of my visits, I bought my wonderful mare, Capers. Capers always did her best. She had a kind and patient personality. I'd been looking forward to learning as much as I could and I'd put together a list so that I would remember each lesson. I told Tom about my wish list. He said, go ahead and read it to him. Right at the top of my list was wanting to learn how to teach the horse to lay down. Tom's response was that Caper doesn't need to learn that. What else is on your list? Although I was interested in learning how to ask a horse to lay down, what was more important to Tom was that he felt that it was not in Caper's best interests. Not only was it something that would not benefit her, but also it was something that she would not enjoy doing or feel good about. Having realised that, what I wanted to do was not appropriate for this particular horse, we moved on to the next item on my list. On another occasion, I was riding capers around and asked Tom if there was anything I could do differently, since capers rarely had her ears forward. He asked me if I praised her and let her know that I liked it when she put her ears forward. I had never thought of that. I'd been so busy thinking about what she was not doing that I had not thought about praising and encouraging her when she did something that I wanted her to do. Later that same day, Tom was helping me understand how to encourage capers to put more effort into backing up when I was riding her. I never liked being too firm with a horse. Tom helped me, f me with this feel. How much or how little pressure for how long? And the most important was the release of the pressure when I felt an effort from her. He kiddingly said that he would be sure to tell me if I got too firm. Then he added that in order to help capers, I needed to be firm enough to be understood but I did not need to hurt her feelings. On another visit, I noticed that Tom's neighbour had a grey gelding for sale. I was looking for a beginner's lesson horse and asked if I could try him out. It was a good horse with a kind nature, as well as being nice looking. I saddled him up and walked and trotted him around the arena in both directions. He had some age on him, so he was a little stiff in his movements. I wanted to see how his canter was. I asked him to canter, but he said he would pass. I asked again, a little firmer, and he gave me a bigger trot, but again passed on the canter. Tom was watching this and said, 
He's cantered all he wants in his life. He doesn't need canter anymore. At that, I walked him for a while and did not ask him to canter again. Cantering was something he did not need to do. On another visit, I brought up a paint mare named Rough and Ready. She was a tense mare that always wanted to rush and do things quickly. She was apprehensive about being handled. Tom spent a lot of time helping me learn how to just present the saddle and bridle to her so that she could stand quiet and feel safe. He showed me how to take a project like bridling and break it down into smaller projects. Each segment needed time spent on it individually. For Ruff, bridling created anxiety, causing her to feel the need to escape. Any handling around her ears and eyes and mouth concerned her. She needed time and proper exposure and handling in each of these areas before she could feel comfortable and accept the bridle going over her ears and eyes and the snaffle into her mouth. Tom helped me with my timing so that I could allow her to be herself and feel safe while continuing to help her know that I valued the way she felt and respected her concerns. So if she began to feel like I was asking too much or going too fast, I recognised that I needed to back off and give her time to relax before I approached her again. Later, Tom gave me several projects to work on while I was riding her. One of the ones I remember was the teeter-totter. It was like a wooden bridge about four feet wide and ten feet long. If you took out the end supports, it became a teeter-totter that balanced over a centre pole. The horse first learned to walk over it and then accept the downward tipping motion as it crossed the centre. Later, we learned how to stand and balance in the centre. With the shift of the rider's weight, the horse would shift its weight, but not its feet. The horse learned to tip the ends of the teeter-totter off the ground, first one and then the other. At first, Ruff was afraid to step on it, but after a while, she caught on that it was safe and that she would be okay. Then a very surprising thing happened. After she caught on, her fear turned to interest and enjoyment. After that, I had trouble getting her to stop tipping the teeter-totter and to step down off it. It had become interesting. It had purpose and meaning. Tom said, she wants to be good as gold all the way through. By allowing Ruff to be herself and accepting that her were real to her, she learned to trust me and was willing to try something that had been difficult at first for her to attempt. I learned many valuable lessons from Tom, but the single most important thing that he taught me was to respect the horse and recognise its fears and limitations. Once I recognised the obstacles to learning, I was able to work with the horse in a compassionate way on all three levels, mind, body, and spirit. Beautiful story, thank you. I messed something up there at the end. It says, what was that last bit, the last line? Let's just go back to that. By allowing Ruff to be herself and accepting that her were real, it must be her fears is missed out. By allowing Ruff to be herself and accepting that her fears were real to her. She learned to trust me and was willing to try something that had been difficult at first for her to attempt. I was going to stick it in and I thought, no, I'm going to be reading it wrong. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you're enjoying these stories as much as I am. Do go out and get a copy of the book. It's such a joy and a treasure to have. Wonderful pictures as well. So thank you. Keep tuning into the light and I look forward to see you next time. Mm -hmm.